Folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Sochaku Henshin Series EX Mirror Monster set number one from Bandai. This first in the series contains Mirror Monster figures from the show Kamen Rider Ryuki, and this particular set contains three Mirror Monsters that of Metal Gellis, Evil Diver, and Gigazel. I don't know when this set was first released. Uh, Based on the date I can see on the packaging, I'm going to guess it was first released around 2005. Uh, I didn't get this set until uh, 2012 when I purchased this from a web store called Mandarake. And I'll post the link uh, down in the description. And Mandarake is basically a collection of Japanese second-hand pop culture uh, stores uh, banding together in a, into a single website. And uh, I purchased this set from the uh, Nakano store and paid 2,500 yen uh, for this set and uh, with the exchange rate uh, at the time I purchased this uh, translates to about $30. Taking a look at the figures here in the packaging you can see uh, the three uh, mirror monsters here. Uh, Metal Gellis here in the back, uh, the largest of the uh, three. And you can see Evil Diver uh, in the back as well. And up front here is Gigazel. And uh, these uh, mirror monsters uh, had belonged to uh, Guy, uh, Kamen Rider Guy uh, for uh, Metal Gellis, uh, Kamen Rider uh, Raya for the Evil Diver, and uh, Kamen Rider Emperor for the uh, Gigazel. And uh, it's pretty cool. A uh, nice big set here. And uh, at the top of the packaging, you can see pictures of uh, the mirror monsters here, at least uh, two of them, and their uh, common writers. And uh, over here on the side, we have a picture of all three of the uh, mirror monsters. Pretty cool. And on the other side, uh, we have a nice picture of Gigazelle with uh, common rider Emperor there. And uh, here we have the back of the packaging uh, with information at the top uh, indicating uh, Socha Kuhenshin uh, series EX mirror monsters with uh, the three uh, symbols for the three common riders that control uh, the mirror monsters. And uh, we have here in uh, Japanese, I cannot read, but uh, inf probably information about Metal Gellis on here. And then you have a picture of a uh, guy there, Kamen Rider guy. And then you have a information about Gigazel. And here we have uh, information about Evil Diver. Now we'll be right back and have uh, these three mirror monsters out of the box. Alright, we're back and we have the EX uh, Mirror Monsters uh, out of the uh, box here. And uh, these figures are actually quite nice. I really uh, enjoy them. Uh, but before we get into the set, uh, there are several uh, things I want to talk about in relation to this line of figures. And uh, first up, uh, this uh, set is part of the So Chaku Henshin line of action figures. And that line produces uh, Kamen Rider figures. Uh, amongst them are uh, Kamen Rider Ryuki figures. And I think uh, these mirror monsters uh, go uh, very well with uh, the Kamen Rider Ryuki uh, figures. Now, uh, Sochako Henshin also produced a sort of a subline called the Rider and Monster series. Now, I don't have any of the uh, Rider and Monster sets, but. Uh, Looking at a few of the videos on YouTube of the uh, some of the Rider and Monster sets, uh, I'm thinking that uh, the sets uh, from the Rider and Monster series, or at least the Mirror Monsters from the Rider and Monster series, and uh, this uh, EX Mirror Monster series are the same figures. Uh, I don't know which one actually came out first. Uh, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't have any of the Rider Monster series, so I don't know what 
a year they were produced. But if I were to guess, I'm thinking the Rider and Monster series came out uh, before the EX Mirror Monster series. Just uh, based on observations on uh, two of these uh, figures here, at least the engineering of these uh, figures. Stuff I noticed uh, on uh, both the uh, Metagelis and the Evil Diva here uh, has led me to believe that uh, these... Uh, EX Mirror Monster series sets are probably re-releases uh, of the Mirror Monsters from the Rider and Monster series. And that, that's just a guess. Uh, I don't have any of uh, the Rider and Monster series yet uh, to compare. But uh, just based on observation, uh, I, I'm guessing that. Now another thing I, I want to bring up is the SH uh, Figure Arts line. Which is a, a line that came out uh, sometime after the Sochaka Henshin line. And uh, they're both uh, produced by Bandai. So, uh, But uh, the figure arts line is uh, more geared toward an adult collector. Uh, in that uh, compared to the Sochaka Henshin, uh, what I've seen so far, uh, the figure arts has uh, more uh, detail in their sculpt, more articulation. Uh, different materials used. Uh, that's a uh, more uh, adult uh, orientated uh, collector uh, for uh, the Figure Arts line. And the Figure Arts line is uh, also producing uh, the Kamen Rider Ryuki uh, figures. And along with those figures, they're also producing Mirror Monster counterparts to those. Uh, figures and characters, uh, which is uh, pretty interesting. Now I do collect the uh, figure arts uh, versions of the uh, Ryuki writers and uh, the mirror monsters and uh, for, from what I've observed, uh, again uh, from this line, is that I think that Bandai took a cue from the Sochaku Henshin figures uh, in their design of uh, the figure arts version. I believe they're new sculpts, but uh, some of the engineering aspects, especially with Metal Gellis and Evil Diver, uh, I think they took a cue from the, the Sochaka Henshin and implemented in the figure arts version, mainly for the um, Genocider. And uh, we'll get into that as we uh, get into these figures. Now I did mention that I do uh, collect the figure arts versions of the Ryuki Riders and the Mirror Monsters and you may be asking why do I even bother to collect the Sochaka Henshin uh, Mirror Monsters and uh, there's another company out there called Max Factory through their Figma line that also produces uh, common rider uh, figures uh, from the Dragon Knight uh, line uh, which is an US adaptation of common rider Ryuki and I do collect uh, those figures as well. Unfortunately, uh, Max Factory did not produce any Mirror Monsters uh, to go with the Kamen Rider uh, figures. And I thought uh, collecting uh, the Sochaku Henshin uh, would be a great uh, idea to match uh, with my Figma figures. Now, like the Figure Arts line, the Figma versions of uh, the Kamen Riders are uh, more geared toward adult collectors and uh, they have uh, like figure arts uh, more detail in their sculpt uh, more articulation and uh, just uh, different material and uh, the style is a little bit off not too bad uh, between the Sochaka Henshin and Figma but I think it, it still goes uh, well enough that uh, I, the Figma common writers uh, would match well with the uh, Sochaka Henshin figures. Uh, enough of my ra rambling though, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, this set. Uh, but before we get into the figures, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what's included uh, with the figures. And uh, we have here a uh, couple of pamphlets in a plastic bag here. And uh, let's go ahead and pull that out. We have here a nice uh, one sheet of other figures, probably from the Sochaka Henshin line. And you can see a whole bunch of common writers. And let me just turn this down a little bit. 
here. You can see, uh, I'm not familiar with the writers on the top row. But I am more familiar with the uh, figures on the bottom row, which is from the Kamen Rider Ryuki line. And uh, you can see that they produced uh, some nice figures and uh, that will probably uh, go well with the So Chaka Henshin uh, Mirror Monsters. So uh, that's pretty cool. On the other side here uh, we have uh, what look like role play items there. Pretty neat and uh, some other figure sets there. So that's cool. Uh, another thing I will take a look at here is uh, basically a visual guide on how the figures work. Uh, it looks like we have a parts list on the top. And uh, below we have a, a description of all the articulation points uh, for the figures and how to use uh, the accessories and features of uh, the figures. So that's kind of cool. And uh, finally we have here uh, what looks like a questionnaire. This is all written in Japanese so I don't know what it says. Uh, but based on the formatting it looks like uh, these are some uh, questionnaires. Uh, questions and you know, probably uh, stuff you have to fill out here and mail uh, to uh, Bandai, probably. Or I guess Tamashi. There's a Tamashi uh, website there. So, alright. Let's go ahead and take a look at the figures and we'll start off with uh, one of the figures uh, here. Uh, we'll start off with Gigazelle and we'll move these guys out of the way for now and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Gigazelle and uh, Gigazelle here is uh, the mirror monster uh, contracted with uh, Emperor and actually I believe uh, Emperor probably has a contract with a whole bunch of monsters. I don't I, th I don't think Gigazelle is the only uh, contract monster if you watch the series. You know he has a whole herd of monsters that he uses. Um, I don't know if they're all contracted to Emperor, but uh, I guess Emperor, I mean to Emperor, sorry, but uh, I guess uh, Gigazelle is contracted to uh, Emperor. And uh, you can see uh, Gigazelle here is actually a pretty nice looking figure. And uh, he's got a lot of design elements uh, going on with him. Uh, his color scheme seems to be primarily black, brown, and uh, a shade of purple, which is uh, pretty cool. And I, I'm guessing that uh, Gigazelle is probably a, a form of the gazelle. Uh, you can see the horns on the top of the head there. And uh, that's actually uh, kind of cool. And uh, you can see that even though uh, this is not like the figure arts uh, line, uh, you can still see some uh, nice amount of detail that they put into the uh, into the figures here. You can see uh, some of the paint detail uh, on the uh, f what looks like uh, two pairs of eyes there, uh, painted red. Uh, very nice. And you have the mouth area here and painted in silver. And uh, you have here uh, the horns uh, that uh, are actually part of uh, Emperor's, I guess, strike vent or sword vent. I'm not sure which one it is. But uh, you can see the design elements right there uh, for uh, Emperor to wield. And uh, this actually does come off and is part of a, a, an accessory. And uh, if you uh, pull this off his head there, you can take uh, this part here and uh, give it to the Sochaka Henshin version of Emperor. And he can use this as his sword or strike vent. Uh, and uh, that's actually uh, kind of neat. And I'll just go ahead and plug that back in. It's just simply pegged in there. And But uh, taking a look uh, at this, uh, the rest of this figure here. You can see uh, some really cool uh, sculpting and painting going on here. Uh, and he looks like he's very uh, armored up here and you got some more armor on the shoulder pads and there's a back view it's a little bit more plain on the back uh, but uh, it's kind of uh, much cooler on the front 
uh, with the design elements and you also have uh, what looks like uh, some hooked uh, blades there uh, behind uh, this particular uh, mirror monster's forearms here and uh, you can see uh, more of the armor uh, going down to the legs and some sculpting detail uh, on this uh, armor which is actually uh, quite nice and uh, you can see that uh, Gigazel wields this huge uh, pronged spear and let me just go ahead and take it off uh, its hands there you can see some of the details what look like a gazelle with the horns again and uh, probably the ears and mouth area there so that's kind of neat and this came in two pieces uh, you can see that so I guess if you wanted to separate it you could uh, but I, I'll keep it on this uh, here and you can see at the tip of this uh, spear is a point bladed point now uh, this spear is uh, made of a softer material you can see it bends uh, quite a bit and I, that's one thing uh, with this uh, particular line so Chaka Henshin line is that uh, the materials uh, used uh, is a more of a softer plastic actually it's a plastic more comparable to Western action figures uh, as opposed to figure arts where they use a very different type of plastic uh, but this one is more uh, similar to uh, like DC Universe classics or uh, Marvel Legends type of plastic used uh, more softer type probably cheaper type of plastic so but uh, still it's uh, fairly nice uh, nicely detailed uh, for uh, this uh, particular line and uh, the camera on here is actually showing this part of the figure as a bluish tint but it's actually purple uh, a light purple tint um, almost like a metallic uh, paint uh, which is actually uh, quite nice and also here this is more of a gold instead of a, what looks like a brown so but uh, still it's a um, fairly nice I guess more bronze than brown but uh, still it's a very uh, nice figure and uh, as I mentioned I, I'm I use I'm using this uh, set of figures to go with my uh, Figma figures and I have a Figma figure here just for comparison I actually have Emperor or Spear in the Dragon Knight line but uh, just uh, for size comparisons you can see it, it compares well uh, not too bad. Uh, I think uh, Gigazel is supposed to be a little bit bigger than uh, the common Riders. Just a shade taller than the common Riders from what I remember of the episode. So I think uh, this uh, size uh, comparison is actually, uh, they go well together. So, uh, And you can also see there where it's slightly different in the styling where the Figma version is a little bit more detailed, while the the uh, So Chaka Henshin is uh, less detailed and more stylized. And uh, but I, I think it still goes well enough. And you can also see on the Figma version with his strike vent or sword vent, uh, where uh, the head here detaches for the So Chaka Henshin version. So that's uh, kind of cool. Now going over articulation with Gigazel, uh, the head is on a ball joint so you can move uh, the head left and right uh, but not all the way around due to the armor and uh, you can move it up and down and, uh, tilt it side to side uh, so basic uh, ball jointed movement uh, except for with the restrictions in the uh, collar neck area uh, the arms uh, can go all the way around and they can go out and in but not out uh, so much uh, because of the uh, shoulder pad armor here and restricts that kind of movement the uh, arms bend at the elbows at a single joint uh, in and out and the hands are on a uh, what look like a ball socketed joint so the hands can go all the way around at the wrist as well as in and out and side to side uh, basically a nice rotational movement at the wrist there is no torso articulation for this particular figure, but there is a waist articulation that allows the uh, upper half uh, to go all the way around. And the uh, legs, I believe, are on a ball socketed joint at the hip. And uh, that allows the leg to go uh, up, uh, down, and slightly back, uh, kind of restricted due to the sculpt of it in the back there. 
and uh, outwards as well. And uh, there is also a uh, rotational around uh, movement at the hip, a little bit, not too much. Uh, single joint at the knee, that allows you to bend the uh, leg uh, that far back and this much forward. And the feet are uh, joined at the ankle with a ball socketed joint. So you can allow the feet to go all the way around, as well as uh, up and down and even uh, side to side uh, for ankle pivot. So uh, Gigazelle is uh, almost your typical uh, humanoid type of uh, figure uh, of the three in the set and uh, has uh, those uh, type of uh, articulation points for a humanoid type figure. So, but uh, this here is Gigazelle. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Evil Diver. And uh, Evil Diver is the uh, contract monster or, contra or mirror monster that's contracted to Common uh, Rider Raya. And uh, you can see here that uh, Evil Diver is basically a uh, stingray, almost uh, pretty much, or a variant of a stingray. And you can see that he's a fairly uh, large figure. Uh, compared to Gigazelle here, yeah, at least uh, width-wise, uh, rather flat, of course, uh, like uh, most stingrays are. And uh, this uh, uh, mirror monster here is actually nicely sculpted and uh, very well painted. Uh, I'm uh, kind of surprised, uh, but uh, you can see the basic uh, design sculpt of a stingray here. It's uh, got a tail. And uh, you got some nice sculpting design here on the, I, I'm going to call them wings, I don't know what you would call them. Uh, tiny little type of feet there, and you can see some eyes for uh, Evil Diver there. And also you can see, uh, these are actually part of the sculpt, they're um, indentations on the edges here with paint on the edges. Uh, so that's kind of cool. It's not simply painted on there, so that's uh, very nice. And uh, underneath, uh, it's uh, got some more sculpting here, I, I guess for legs. I'm not sure if you call them legs or not. Uh, but that's actually sculpted there and painted uh, black on here. And uh, you can also see what here are uh, some roller wheels. Now this is uh, where the Sochako Henshin is really more designed for play than it is uh, for collectability uh, like the figure arts version. But uh, they, there is three sets uh, of wheels that allow you to um, roll Evil Diver on the uh, ground uh, or on the floor, which is uh, kind of cool on there. And uh, all, I, one thing I also noticed on the paint here, it's not just purple or pinkish purple on uh, this particular figure. There's a combination of a gray type of... I don't know, like a spray on here, which uh, actually adds a, a, a layer of detail, uh, which is kind of cool. So it's not a single uh, application of paint. Uh, so it's actually uh, kind of nice. Now, I mentioned earlier about how the figure arts uh, actually took design elements uh, from uh, the Sochaka Henshin uh, mirror monsters. And you could tell uh, because uh, this uh, particular uh, figure uh, has uh, stuff that the figure arts uh, looks like they've adopted uh, in that uh, the tail here actually moves up and down uh, this moves a little bit uh, and also the uh, wings here actually uh, open up at mainly uh, for the uh, genocider uh, the evil diver naturally doesn't have the wings spread out like that so that's where I see where uh, Bandai actually adopted some of the stuff from Sochaka Henshin into the figure arts line and also a couple of ports here uh, you can see right here uh, that are used in the combination to create uh, Genocider uh, with uh, Metal Gellis there so uh, you can see where um, the figure arts actually borrowed that and uh, Speaking of um, design elements, uh, another neat thing here is that this uh, tail is uh, po both posable and detachable. And you just pull that off and you can see it forms the whip 
that Raya uses. So uh, that's kind of cool, and you can see the design element there of the, the port uh, that's common on the uh, Kamen Rider Ryuki figures or, and uh, characters. And uh, this tail is uh, made of a rubbery type material, so you can pose it and bend it. Oh, not really pose it, but bend it and uh, uh, really play with it. So I think uh, that's actually uh, kind of cool, and you can just plug that back in. It just pegs in on there. So... Uh, fairly neat uh, mirror monster here and uh, as far as articulation goes for uh, Evil Diver basically the, the wings the edges of the wings move out and that's really for transformation for into a uh, genocide or not for Evil Diver itself and uh, as I showed earlier the uh, back of the tail moves up and down uh, which is kind of cool and the, the little flippers here are made of a very soft rubbery type material they don't really articulate you just really bend the, the rubberized material so uh, but that's about it for articulation for evil diver uh, a really nice large mirror monster to go with a common rider raya now we take a look at the final mirror monster in the set, and that's my Metal Gellus, uh, which happens to be uh, my favorite of the three. I really enjoy uh, this uh, figure, despite uh, some of the issues uh, there are with this figure. Uh, but uh, taking a look at Metal Gellus here, uh, you can see that it's a very nice uh, figure here. And let me just turn this down a little bit. And uh, you can see he's very armored up, uh, pretty much like the uh, rhino that this mirror monster, I guess, uh, portrays. And uh, it's actually uh, really cool. He got this metallic armor that he's uh, got on here. And uh, it's very, very cool. And you can see uh, his uh, the texture of his skin underneath uh, in a what looks like a reddish purple color on here with some uh, shades of uh, gray there and uh, very cool very nice and uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, I believe that the uh, the Metal Gellis that's a part of uh, the Rider and Monster series is, was probably released prior to this uh, version uh, and that the reason why I believe that is because uh, Metal Gellis and uh, Evil Diver, along with Venosnaker in the Rider and Monster series, were packaged uh, with Oja. And I believe uh, they were packaged that way on purpose uh, in order for uh, you to be able to create a Genocider figure from that set. So that's the reason why I believe that the Rider and Monster series uh, was released prior to this uh, particular series uh, and uh, this uh, Metal Gellis actually has functionality uh, where you can actually put together a Ven not a Venice Snaker but a, a Genocider uh, figure and uh, and also I think uh, that's where uh, Figure Arts gets its design cue of its Genocider uh, by using the same uh, engineering elements uh, here in the So Chaka Henshin uh, line and uh, to show that uh, basically uh, to form Genocider uh, using So Chaka Henshin uh, parts uh, you basically take the head off off the top uh, just like uh, in the figure arts version and uh, you raise the the head up that way and I don't have a Venice Snaker but if you had a, a so chaka henshin venice snaker uh, you would probably put the head uh, and neck area right about here where the pegs are and then uh, after that you would peg in uh, evil diver onto the ports here from evil diver onto uh, the port pegs here on metagellus and that i can do since we have those two figures and uh, you can see that they join uh, together and you would uh, pull up the uh, wing tips there and then if you had the Venice Snaker, you would have Genocider. And I believe uh, that was included, the three mirror monsters were included in the Rider and Monster version uh, of the Osha set. So uh, 
that's uh, kind of cool. And that's why I think that the Rider and Monster series came out prior to this one. And you can also see where uh, the figure arts uh, version of Genocider get and the um, Mirror Monsters get the design elements from. But uh, I'm putting this guy back together and just peg it back in and just show uh, some more details of uh, uh, Metagellus here and uh, you can see he's got a, the armored head very cool nice paint detail with the eyes and also uh, the gold horn here uh, or, and the smaller horn there and uh, the horn is made of a softer material uh, again I think uh, this is more for uh, playability than collectability and uh, really uh, for uh, I guess safety reasons on there you don't want it to have it uh, puncturing out an eye or anything like that uh, but uh, you can see uh, uh, more uh, design elements uh, on the metal of the plating here although it's just sculpted into the arm but you can see the detail uh, that's gone into there and uh, really cool uh, claws uh, very cool and uh, they're made of a softer material you can bend that as well so that's kind of kind of neat and uh, the back here is a little bit um, the design on there is not that great you could see the inner portions of the mechanism uh, I forgot uh, you would have to move the, uh, this uh, forward and back uh, to allow um, Venice Snicker to form Genocider there uh, but that's uh, kind of a weak point uh, with this figure you could see the innards of the plastic uh, on there so would have been nicer to have this a little bit more flush with the back there and uh, but moving down you could see uh, the armored legs and uh, the texture the skin texture for Metagellus there and then uh, more detail on the uh, feet there uh, with the nice uh, paint of gold uh, which is a uh, very similar to the claw. So overall, a nice bigger uh, figure. Uh, Metal Gallus, of course, was a larger mirror monster compared to Gigazel. And uh, you could see, uh, let me just do a size comparison yeah, between the two, that uh, Metal Gallus is quite large. And uh, let me just line them up against a Figma character there. You can see uh, a, a much larger uh, figure. Now, uh, for articulation for Metagellus, uh, he is, I would consider, uh, the second of the most articulated. Uh, Gigazel is actually the most articulated uh, due to the humanoid uh, structure. But uh, for uh, Metagellus, he is articulated, but not too much. Uh, and uh, not as uh, articulated compared to the figure arts. But uh, for the head... It basically can swivel up and down. That's really more for the uh, mechanism for transformation into uh, uh, into uh, Genocider. But uh, the head does go up and down, which is uh, nice. Uh, but that's about it uh, for the head. Uh, the horn actually does uh, move up and down. And I think uh, that's really for the, um, the guy figure, the Kamen Rider guy. Uh, because you could detach the head and use this uh, as a common Rider guy's uh, stored or strike vent. And I forgot to mention uh, the set also includes uh, this piece here that you basically uh, peg underneath here. And uh, that in turn pegs into uh, common Rider guy's uh, arm or hand. Or I think it's the arm area uh, for the So Chaco Henshin version of. Uh, common Rider guy but let me put that back on there but uh, that's uh, kind of neat on the articulation on the horn and uh, the torso area on this slides uh, forward and back and but again that's due to transformation into genocider on there uh, the arms uh, do go all the way around at the shoulder uh, only on a swivel cut it doesn't go out or in unfortunately uh, the elbows do bend uh, on a single joint uh, but there is no rotation at the bicep or even at the forearm. That's a, that's about it on, as far as articulation on the arm. And uh, there is no torso articulation other than what was shown earlier for the transformation. And the only articulation point uh, on the leg is at the hip, which is a simple swivel cut. 
and that's about it no articulation at the knees or ankles so you can see how it's more limited in articulation compared to Gigazelle but uh, a little bit more uh, articulation than uh, Evil Diver there but uh, still it's a nice uh, mirror monster figure uh, alternative uh, if you don't collect the uh, figure arts version or if you just really want to collect it for the Sochaka Henshin line or even other lines like I'm doing for Figma uh, I think uh, these mirror monsters actually provide a nice alternative and uh, uh, depending on where you look uh, it's kind of expensive in some places or if you're able to find uh, a set like I did uh, for uh, relatively cheaper than uh, like eBay uh, I would uh, recommend it if you're looking for an alternative uh, set of mirror monsters but uh, this is my casual peek into the Sochaka Henshin uh, EX Mirror Monster series uh, set number one uh, that includes Metagellus, Gigazelle, and Evil Diver. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.